All right, so in this video, we've got another question submitted by Haddad. And his question was, let's find the area of the region that contains the points in two dimensions in x, y plane, such that x is greater than one and less than square root of two, and y is greater than zero and less than the natural log of x plus square root of x squared minus one. So let's find the area and close by this. But first, let's plot this just so we know what we're dealing with. This will give us a better idea. So we've got our x and y plane here. And the problem says that our boundaries in the x-axis are 1 to square root of 2. And in the y-axis, it runs from 0 to this function, natural log of whatever. And I'm not really too sure what it looks like, but I do know it starts at 0 at 1, because if we plug in a 1, we get a natural log of 1, which is 0. So it's going to be like this and do some crazy stuff right here that we don't really care about. And bound it off at that x point. So the area that we are interested in is this shaded region right here. So the way that we're going to find that is first by integrating with respect to y from this boundary up to the function boundary. And then we're going to integrate with respect to x from 1 to square root of 2. So let's set this up as a double integral. So this would have limits from 1 to square root of 2. And then we this guy would have limits from 0 to natural log of x plus square root of x squared minus 1. And dy dx, because we're integrating with respect to y first. So we can write this as the integral from 1 to square root of 2. And if we integrate with respect to y, we just get a y, and we would evaluate it at these limits. So the integrand would be ln of x plus square root of x squared minus 1 dx. So now what we got to do is actually figure out how we're going to integrate this. So the first thing that I would start off with is checking to whether or not u substitution would work. And since I've got a, an x squared right here, in order to use u substitution, I would need a, an x term also associated with this term, and I don't have that, so I'm not going to use u substitution. If we use integration by parts, we would get a nasty du term, and I don't want to mess with that. So instead, what I recognize is I've got an x squared minus, a square root of x squared minus one term, and I've also got this natural log term. And just from practice and experience, I know that I can probably take advantage of the fact that tan squared theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta. This is just a trigonometric identity. And also, the integral of secant theta is equal to the natural log of secant theta plus tan theta. And I'm not sure exactly how these are gonna come in play yet, but I see that I have a natural log here and I can get a natural log if I work with secant theta. And I see that I have this square root of x squared minus one term, which if I plugged in secant theta could simplify uh, this expression. So those are all key things to look for whenever deciding whether or not to use uh, trig substitution. So I'm gonna go ahead and substitute in secant theta for x. So I'm gonna substitute that in and this will give me a dx equal to secant theta tan theta d theta where secant theta tan theta is just the derivative of secant theta that is another trig identity now let's substitute secant theta in for x so we've got the integral of 1 to square root of 2 of natural log of secant theta plus the square root of secant squared theta minus one. And then we have the dx term, which is secant theta tangent theta d theta. Where this guy right here, this guy using this identity reduces to tangent theta. So I can rewrite this result as the integral of one to square root of two, natural log of secant theta plus tan theta 
times secant theta tan theta d theta. So for a little sanity check, I see this term right here, and then I can look up here, and I see that this matches this trig identity that we define up here. So let's take advantage of that, and let's now let's use u substitution. So let's say that u is equal to natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta. So du would equal this guy right here, secant theta. Because if the integral of secant theta is this, then if we take the derivative of this, we get secant theta. And now our dv is going to be secant theta tan theta d theta. And if we integrate that, we get a v of secant theta. And this is just another trig identity where the derivative of secant theta is equal to secant theta tan theta. So I use this identity right here in order to uh, integrate this. So let's integrate by part. So we've got the uv minus integral of v du. So let's go ahead and plug in for that. So u times v is natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta times v, which is secant theta. I'm going to write it out here. And this is evaluated from 1 to root 2. And then I have minus the integral of v du, which is secant theta times du, which is secant theta. So I'm going to write that as secant squared theta and d theta. And let's use yet another trig identity that the derivative of tangent theta is equal to secant squared theta. So we'll use this identity right here. And I forgot to write the limits, which are 1 to square root of 2. So we've got secant theta times the natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta minus tangent theta, all evaluated from 1 to square root of 2. Now recall that when we started this trig substitution, we started by substituting in secant theta for x. So if we draw a triangle to represent this substitution, x is equal to secant theta. Therefore, we can say that cosine of theta is equal to 1 over x just the inverse of secant theta. So if we have a triangle and we this is theta and cosine of theta is one over x, then we can mark one right here and x right here. So now let's use this triangle in order to substitute in for secant theta and the tan theta. So this, get, this triangle gives us an expression for secant and tan theta. So secant theta is just x and tangent theta, well, we need this side right here. We can solve for that side using the Pythagorean theorem, which is x squared minus 1. So tangent theta is equal to square root of x squared minus 1 over 1. And that's just using basic trig. So I can simplify this expression to x times the natural log of x plus square root of x squared minus 1 minus square root of x squared minus 1. And then I can evaluate this from 1 to square root of 2, which gives me 0.24645 when I plug square root of 2 into this expression and evaluate it with a calculator. And then minus, and if I plug in 1, this term goes to 0, and we get a, a 1 in the natural log argument, which is 0. So we get minus zero. So our final answer is going to be 0.24645. And there we go. So thanks for watching. I hope that cleared that up. And keep on sending me requests, guys. I appreciate it. And best of luck to you all.